a, a, a person who joins uh, the next, the next one of our best friends that is in our Discord talking live wrestling like nobody can. Don't be a chode. Head on over there right now and be a part of our wrestle fund uh, over there at Patreon. Or sorry, yeah, patreon.com slash 1900 wrestling. Oh, by the way, hey, hey, oh, you're like, well, what do I get? What do I get in that Discord? How about this? How about you have a man inside the Tokyo Dome for Wrestle Kingdom? You are going to get the sights and sounds, the likes of which you will never see. Of course, we will do our own uh, audio documentary like we normally do, but you will get to see it as it happens. Folks, go over there right now. Patreon.com slash 1900 wrestling. But enough of talking about how we support the show. What do you say we just do the damn thing? I want you to call me for all of wrestling's latest news and views. I've been involved in wrestling for 35 years, and nobody, but nobody knows wrestling like me. Remember the number one. 900 wrestling. Oh. Gentlemen, welcome back to One Nine Hundred Wrestling. This is uh, the best, the best, the best of the best. Uh, 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 yeah, listen, you've tried the rest. Now sample the best. This is uh, my name is Justin Robert Young. Joining me as always, Willie Dills Gregory. How you doing? Uh, doing, doing okay. Doing as good as I can be doing uh, as a man who just got his electricity back and still doesn't have water. But I'm you guys feeling are- like. You guys are there was suffering. a good moment when the when the electricity came back. That was like a victorious moment. So I'm hopeful that pretty soon the water will come back. I still I have some coffee because I, I luckily am one of those guys who keeps like a full teapot full of water <laughs> at all times. So ready to rock there. But Iggy's getting thirsty. And all Uh-oh. I have is bottled water right now. Uh oh. Well, I'll tell you what, we're gonna do our best to quench your thirst with wrestling knowledge. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh a huge week. And 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 we we, we missed our Monday, but you wanna know what? I'm glad. I'm glad we did, because for those of you who are just tuning in, either watching on twitch.tv slash Justin R. Young or are listening, our dear, dear listeners uh, uh, on podcasts, wherever they might find you, you will know that one of the things that I have told Willie time and time again is as much as you might want it, as much as you might need it, Broken Matt Hardy is never coming to the WWE. You just have to understand it. Broken Matt Hardy is not coming to the WWE. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you want to get into semantics, you know, you can you can say, hey, I won that bet. I was correct. Uh, Broken Matt Hardy not here. Nowhere to be found. However, Woken Matt Hardy has definitely entered the building and is not going anywhere anytime soon. This is this is happening. Let me ask you, where where were you? When when you first understood that you would again have that voice in your life, so okay, I was I was actually watching Raw. I I normally don't watch Raw live because yeah. I don't have cable TV. It's hard for me to watch Raw live. Uh, I did, I will say I found a way to watch it that evening. Yeah, uh, and I don't really know why. I think it was just because you know I just wasn't doing anything else at the moment, right? And so this was two weeks ago, right? Yeah. And so he has a match with with Bray uh, Bray Wyatt. Yep. Not, you know, not like a super interesting. There was there wasn't anything super special about this match. Right. It was it was a match. And I don't think they had wrestled before. So it was kind of fun to see those two guys go at it. But I thought it was kind of like I remember thinking, well, that's weird. I was hoping that Bray Wyatt would be the guy that broken Matt Hardy would wrestle when he actually became broken. Yeah. Uh, that was, I think, the feud a lot of people looked at and thought that's the one that makes sense. I think this was the feud that they wanted. I mean, if you remember sure. back back in uh, Final Deletion era, uh, it was Bray Wyatt uh, uh, hitting up Matt Hardy on Twitter and them going back and forth. And that's it wasn't true. long after the Final Deletion that remember there was that Bray that that Wyatt family New Day feud that had the Wyatt family compound fight. No, that's very true. I mean, it all it, it all felt kind of like, the, yeah, that that's where we would eventually be headed. Right. So then I was like, wait, he's not broken. Like, they're just going to have a one off match just because Jeff is injured or something like it. That's how it felt. Right. Yeah. Didn't feel like anything was going to happen. No. And then all of a sudden he gets hit with a sister Abigail. And apparently the force of a sister Abigail is insane because it awoke uh, the it, the. Matt Hardy was just the vessel. Sorry, Matthew Hardy was just the vessel. Yes. 
And the soul inside, uh, which had been, you know, roaming for millennia, although yeah. not lost, apparently, uh, was was awoken inside Matthew Hardy. So here we go. And then you could see, I mean, it was happening. But it was kind of also then it was weird because it was just kind of one of those we're going to commercial type moments. Yeah. So it wasn't like they really made a huge deal. It was just like, oh, my God, here we go. And then we waited a week. Yes. Right? Now, now you got the sense the first week that this was not a false start. Rebby Hardy starts tweeting. Uh, Matt starts uh, uh, signaling, uh, you know, that this is going to be the thing. But we had not seen. And this is really what I love the most about this gimmick. It's the voice. The voice to me is maybe one of the greatest contributions to professional wrestling in my lifetime. The, the, him doing every accent at the same time uh, is just the best. Uh, there's something about it that I find lyrical and comforting. It is beyond compare. And you didn't know exactly how much he was going to be able to do that. Because at that point, and let, 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 let's bring this through, through the timeline. So Matt Hardy does, uh, you know, takes the sister Abigail... Yes. And all of a sudden starts doing the the, 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 the the delete, delete, delete while looking maniacal in yeah. the corner. But first he kind of like starts, he, she's freaking out like that something has happened. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then delete just like one and then a couple more. And then, yeah, and then it's very clear he is now morphed into Woken and, and Matt Hardy. on television, they highlighted it. There was a lot of Corey and Booker, you sure. know, like, what's going on with Matt Hardy, right? Yeah. It is, yeah, and, and and it was like you know it was a tight shot on him for yeah. a while. So for a yeah, while, focus on him. We find out during the week that Ed Nordholm, the uh, uh, man who calls the shots there at Anthem, yeah, says, "Well, hell, you know, we uh, have our new deals with everybody. Says that they're going to be allowed to use their gimmicks when they leave Impact." And we are amending all of our old agreements to say the same. This is a far cry from the Ed Nordholm who was saying, I'm sorry, Matt and Rebby Hardy. Uh, no matter how much you might have contributed to this character, you are under the payroll of Impact. And you will have to either make a deal with us for the licensing of the character or you will not be able to do the character or we will sue you. Now, the difference between Ed Nordholm then and Ed Nordholm now is that Jeff Jarrett is no longer running wrestling operations for Impact. Allegedly, and this is backed up by reporting that we have seen now, allegedly, Jeff uh, Jarrett was the one who was against you know, uh, uh, you know, letting anybody take their IP. You, you, you own the wrestler's IP. That's what you do. That's what yeah. being a wrestling company is. So now we have the biggest impediment to the bit being uh, on WWE kind of resolved. So bring me through, Dills, how you experienced what happened on Monday night. So, so yeah. So then this Monday night, you know, it's it's, it's raw. Raw is happening. Uh, and then we, we, we get, which is, you know, sometimes awesome and oftentimes falls flat. We get just one of those backstage kind of promo segments, right? Yeah. Just pops up on the big screen. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, and it's Bray Wyatt and he's doing his cryptic Bray Wyatt stuff, uh, which, you know, it's funny because so many people used to be really into this Bray Wyatt character. Yes, and I still am, but I do understand why it it's maybe gotten a little long in the tooth, right? Like it's a little. We've now seen these promos from him so many times that yeah. it's hard to continue to stay excited, right? Yeah. So he comes on. He's doing his thing. He's talking about who is Matt Hardy, uh, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, I, you think I have not? I've never seen WWE do this before, by the way. Which was this like cut back and forth between two guys doing a promo that they're not necessarily talking to each other, but they are right. Like they're it's edited in such a way that each thing that kind of they say is referring to the last thing or setting up the next thing. Yeah. All of a sudden, it cuts to Matt Hardy. The crowd goes nuts. Let's and, uh, let, let, yeah. let, let, let's go ahead and hear yes, it. Yes, it just opens with that. For millennia, 
Uh, and he goes into his whole spiel about, you know, being a soul who's been roaming for millennia or whatever, but not lost. And he's uh, studied in the halls of Alexandria or whatever. And, uh, oh, my God, he's fought alongside Genghis Khan. Genghis yeah. Khan! <laughs> it was the best thing. And I've watched this promo now probably about six or seven times. And it makes me smile and laugh every single time. Like, it it was, and, and at that moment, it was like, okay, no, they're not going to give us a weird watered-down version. No. Of, yeah, yes, they're going to rename it, but they're not going to give us some half-assed version where he doesn't really get to be what he was. I mean, he's right? wearing, and, and he's wearing right, the, the weird crushed velvet uh, 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 top of, of, of He's, of, he's of starting broken. to, like, like... Uh, tease his hair now again so it's like really fluffy instead of just kind of like the straight down old Matt Hardy style yeah uh, you know he never lost the little blonde thing but he definitely like it was you know he was like half assed broken Matt Hardy right he would do the delete mo like arm motion he yeah. would do the arms out to the side and stuff he would do the, the teethy smile but this is like true Matt Hardy. No, like I mean, Matt listen. Hardy. As soon as you're getting into conditions and uh, all all the people that he has, uh, uh, you know, inhabited and uh, the people that he's friends with, yeah, you know, we we are getting the whole hog. And what was amazing about it to me, number one, here was the first amazing thing. I had a friend of mine, or our our, our friend Katie, Katie and James, who we went to WrestleMania with. They live in L.A. Raw was in L.A. They were at Raw. All of a sudden, I get a text message from Katie. Now, I was not watching Raw Live. I was trying to get some work done, and I was at a bar where I was also watching the Steelers game. Back story, Katie is also a Steelers fan. So all of a sudden, I get a text message that says, here we go. And I'm watching the Steelers games. The Steelers are not doing really well. So I'm about to tell her, like, the fuck do you mean here we go? Like, this, this game is awful. And then I remember she's at Raw. And then I remember if there is one thing that she is texting me about, it is that the Matt Hardy segment is about to happen. And for a segment that was taped, how many times do you hear people excited to be live at a place where they played the tape? Like, it was amazing. That crowd reaction was insane. And what it really, uh, uh, beyond being thrilled that Matt Hardy is back, it made Bray seem fresh. Like it, No, yeah, that's I you know, it's funny. I going on like squared circle afterwards, it was weird because all these people were, you know, kind of crapping on the fact that the crowd was popping every time woke and Matt Hardy was on the screen and then silent for Bray. And I think people are are maybe a little bit misinterpreting that, which is just they're very excited about Matt Hardy right as now. As they should be. Yeah. But Bray was like, it was he was the perfect kind of uh, anti-hero to the superhero of Woke and Matt Hardy because, you know, who else could pull off this this laughing uh, outro that they did? Yeah. Where, you know, Bray, we're used to Bray's laugh, which is pretty sick. Like, it's, it's an a awesome, maniacal laugh, yeah. right? And then you get Matt Hardy's version, which is just <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. It's like, like the, what I love about Matt Hardy's thing is that it's it's not what you'd expect. Like, it's kind of like what, like, if, like, a high school kid or something was like, all right, come up with, like, a wrestling gimmick and wasn't, you know, super good at accents or something, so just did something that they could do, and then it just kind of built upon itself. That's kind of what we're at, right? Like, like you said, the accent, what is it? Is it Southern? Is it it's English? Every, is it, it's I don't every. know what the, it is. What accent is it? Every. That's that's yeah. how that's it's the just only him way. doing a weird accent. Like it's just what he came up with as a weird accent. Yeah. And it's one of those things where everything was like not like it's it's like it's not that good, but all of it together is so good. It's a, it's I brilliant. don't understand. Like what but, is the accent for Genghis Khan? Like there's just no there's no accent. There's no, no. language that that demands you in English say Genghis Khan. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, it, it's it's brilliant. I, I thought that the, the 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 crowd reaction was amazing. I was so excited to watch it. Now, here's what surprised me, though. This was the reporting out. Uh, I think either yesterday or today from uh, Tom Barrasso, not Tom Barrasso. I think uh, uh, Jim Barrasso. Tom Barrasso is the old fucking uh, Penguins goalie. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, Mr. Barrasso of uh, of Sports Illustrated. 
His reporting is that the reason why uh, uh, you know they are getting uh, he got the kind of push he did. This was late in the show, by the way. I think that th- that they saved this reveal for right before the main event. Yeah, yeah. It was it was kind of uh, on the. One one of those things where everyone was like, "Are they just not going to address what happened last week?" You know that Matt Hardy clearly has transformed into Woken Matt Hardy. Like they, it had been on Twitter. Everyone knew it was coming. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like not being addressed at the next Raw. You know, so I think everyone was a little on the on the edge of their seats about when it was going to happen. So it was like a a nice big release when it actually did. Well, look at this. This is the reporting from Sports Illustrated. Matt Hardy's broken status has been uh, reawoken, and there's a significant proponent for the Woken character in WWE. It is none other than Meek Mahan himself, uh, Vince McMahon. Hardy's mannerisms, creativity, and passion for the character will be on full display within his woken state. A contact within WWE reached out to uh, inform Sports Illustrated that Hardy will be allowed creative license by Meek Mahan, who sees the opportunity uh, to cash in on a character that's already established. Like, that's pretty much everything that you want, right? Because the big question for wrestling fans after the the, the tease is, what kind of Matt Hardy are we going to get with this version? It certainly looked like we were getting the whole hog in in, in the video package. And if Vince McMahon is behind it, literally the only thing else that we want is, is... pre-tapes right like yeah we want we want pre-tapes we want vanguard one we want senior benjamin we want rebby we want we want the full thing right senior benjamin's Uh, gotta make an appearance yeah yeah like king maxwell we gotta get all of it right like it just needs to all happen and yeah a lot of a lot of pre-tape segments we need a lot of that we need a lot of you know okay so another thing i saw somebody bring up on squared circle that i didn't even think about which is brilliant is you know Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt's House of Horrors match kind of fell flat in a lot of people's eyes, right? Yeah. So that, I mean, and and maybe it's not Bray Wyatt's fault. Maybe the fault lies on the fact that Randy Orton's not really the proper foil for a House of Horrors match, right? So, I mean, if you watch, like, the match in the backyard of the Hardy's estate between, like, Jeff and Matt, that thing was amazing. I would love to see... You know, something like that where Woke and Matt has like set up this, you know, there is, there is arena no for, doubt. Their, for them to battle. There is no doubt in my mind that Bray Wyatt can fill the shoes of the decay and uh, uh, the other people that they worked into. Like, like the, the you know, all the other crazy tag, the, 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 the tag team Apocalypto and stuff like that. Bray mm-hmm. Wyatt's fine. He'll be able yeah. to handle it. He'll be able yeah. to do it. Now, I, I guess, like, where this all kind of ends up going, because I would like, obviously, you'd like to see kind of the full spectrum of this all happen, but I, I do like the fact that they didn't just kind of retell the same story, right? They're, they're just allowing the character to come back, and then they're yeah. going to hopefully be just, like, telling new stories with this cast of characters, which everybody just loves watching. Uh, but I would like to see when Jeff comes back, then then you can turn Jeff into Brother Nero again and all that kind of stuff. Uh could be pretty cool, right? I mean, like Jeff listen, could go back and be like, "What the hell happened? Like, I thought we left this behind or something." You know what I mean? There could be some really interesting stuff there. The, the whole thing just there's too many possibilities. I'm just kind of like, I see a lot of people trying to figure it out. I'm just along for the ride at this point. Uh, I'm I'm. Uh, I'll tell you what, seven deities take the wheel. That's that's <laughs> exactly. my official stance on this. Like, I, I, I don't care what Matt Hardy wants to do. I'm here for all of it. I was here for all of it with Impact. I'm here for all of it with with with, with the WWE. Uh, if if like, look, uh, all it takes is for him to you know give him uh give him a, a special on the network, right? Let him shoot his own crazy crap down there in North Carolina and Anything just, he and just wants roll to do. with it. Yeah. YouTube videos on the WWE YouTube channel, uh, whatever he wants to do, I don't care. Like, just let him do it because he's the one who knows this character. He understands what the arc should probably be. I, the funny thing is, like, Vince likes control, right? He likes to control things. He likes to be the man in charge. But you know what he also really likes? He likes money. Well, and I, I think when he looks at the Woken Matt Hardy character, he sees uh, uh, the ability to make money off of something that already is, like, it's hot, right? Like, th- there's... No need to build this. It is built, right? And you could just unleash it and let it go and cash in. So so is it safe to say now that the WWE has every 
the best of everything that Impact ever did. Now that they have AJ Styles and Samoa Joe and Broken Matt Hardy, like I mean, is that and Bobby like, Roode and, and Bobby yeah. Roode? Like, is there anything else that like that Impact? They don't have did? Austin Aries. Austin anymore. Aries is the uh, defiant champion now. Yeah, any anymore, right? They had yeah. Austin Aries, but you had him, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they don't have the six sided ring or the eight, whatever it is. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, that's fine. You can have that. You want to yeah. know what? All right. right. Yeah, no, pretty much. Uh, you know, they even at this point have their version of the X Division, right? They got 205 Live. Uh, and by the way, 205 Live has been actually finally putting on some awesome matches. They seem to be letting them do stuff now. Um, you got Enzo and you got Drew Gulak and you got it. Like, all, it's all, yeah, it's kind of all happening right now. Like, I would say the only thing I'm disappointed in right now in WWE, and I'll talk to you about it, I guess, later, is is uh, SmackDown. Suddenly is not like the – like Raw is like – last year it was SmackDown, yeah. right? SmackDown was hot as hell. Yeah. This year it is clearly Raw. Like Raw is insane right now. I I, I want to sit through three hours of Raw. That's that's crazy. And that is saying I, something. Yeah. Well, That's you want to let, let's 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 get into SmackDown because uh, I I think I I agree with you that SmackDown hasn't gelled. There, there's a lot of kind of jagged edges that like they've they got a lot of interesting places they could go, but they have not gone there yet, and it doesn't help SmackDown feeling like the B brand when uh, Raw brings back a uh, a long uh, 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 sought after returning star in Paige and gives her a posse. And then yeah. the next night, we just kind of get a, a a girl group on SmackDown because question because mark. Because I guess so. Yeah, like I, it was very strange to me that the Riot Squad just kind of ha- happened. Um, yeah. Ruby Riot is great. I didn't expect her to suddenly jump from NXT to the to the SmackDown roster though. Like that seemed to kind of just happen for whatever reason. Maybe I- they just felt like they wanted another. Uh, you know, another like dominant faction of female wrestlers running around on both brands, I guess. Well, there's the a problem rumor, is, is that there, 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 there's a rumor going around that we're going to get a lady Royal Rumble. OK, and fair so, enough. So so That's you cool. need you need to you need to you need to, you know, make it worth it by having a roster that could have 30 of a 30 woman battle royal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's that's definitely fair. I mean, you, but you can obviously like you can pull from the May Young Classic if you want to. You can do all sorts of stuff. Um, but the problem that I have with it is that Paige comes back with uh, who is it? It's Man- Mandy Rose and uh, Sonya Deville. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So she's got like her she's got like her UFC you know MMA fighters. Yeah. by her side, who look like they could kick ass. Do well, kick I mean, ass. Mandy Mandy Rose is the cute blonde, right? Sure, sure. sure. Pa- Paige yeah, yeah. is the goth chick, and Sonya yeah. is the <laughs> rough and tumble chick. And yeah. then you look at the Riot Squad: Sarah Logan's the rough and tumble chick, Ruby Riot's the goth chick, and Liv Morgan's the cute blonde. The cute like, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the problem is that, like, you know, Paige's posse is actually kicking ass, and the Riot Squad is not. I don't know what they're doing, really. Like, they they're acting like. They're like the tough mean girls. And then like they came out for this segment where they were like, we're here to fight. And then two of them started fighting. And then they just like the other one started like breaking up the fight. I was like, that's when we are all supposed to fight. Like you're supposed to like kick everyone's ass. And Paige's crew is actually doing that. And I don't know. uh, It's it's kind of weird. I'm not really I'm not really understanding what's happening here. But you're right. That makes sense. They just need to get a lot of women up here. And make them all look tough, right? Yeah, you know, it's... Uh, uh, the funny thing is, I actually, I think I like the Riot Squad better, like, in terms of talent. Like, I I, I really... I'm, I'm really bullish on Sarah Logan. And I sure, think that, yeah. I, I, th- I think that Liv Morgan is kind of... You know, uh, we are now at a point where the wrestling has gotten so good on the women's side that both Mandy Rose and Liv Morgan look like the kind of girls that Vince McMahon would have wanted back in the 90s, sure. yeah. right? Maybe a little bit less on 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 the TNA. They look like actual athletes and not models, right? Yeah. Uh but they're they're gorgeous and they can go or at least theoretically can, right? 
Uh, yeah, they look like yeah, they look like they can actually fight. Like it's not yeah, it's not just uh you know brawn panties matches and stuff that they can perform in, right? They can actually go. I will say this: I love Sarah Logan's promos because she. It's hard for her, but her accent is awesome. Yeah, and her character is hilarious. So the, I like that. Yeah, I think she's my favorite of the three for sure. Because uh, like her whole thing, like there was a, somebody posted something about. Did she just say gay meat? Because she was talking about how Daniel Bryan had never been to the South and had never eaten game meat. Game I think is meat. what she said. Yeah, game meat. Yeah, game meat. Like you know, venison. Yeah. Yeah. But no, gay meat is what it sounded no, like. Probably yeah, not not gay places. meat. No, no, no. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah you know, I, 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 I just kind of feel like right now SmackDown, even though they've got the pay per view coming up, it does just kind of feel like they're in a holding pattern, right? Like uh, uh, the, yeah. the 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 WWE champion. Obviously, this gender thing is just over. Right, like they're gonna do one more match, but you can't imagine yeah, they have they're to like get the title it, back. Right? They have to like put the cap on it now. Yeah, so that's, that's done. Part of the reason why it feels that way, right? Like that's part of the way it feels like we're in a holding pattern. Is like you look at what's happening at the so the the card for Clash of Champions, which is still a couple weeks away, but the card for it is I'd say mostly there. Like it's at least more than halfway there. The big matches are in, so you know AJ Styles gender, and yep. that's. That's a match that's like hard to get excited for again, right? Like it was super cool when you saw AJ win on SmackDown because uh, nobody thought that they were going to have Jinder drop the title on yeah. SmackDown, right? So that was like the thing about that. I assume AJ is just going to win again. Then you got Charlotte Flair and Natalia, which I feel it's like that's I feel another. Like seen this for that's a another while. cap. Put the cap. On. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So let's like end that one. Then you got Baron Corbin, Bobby Roode, Dolph Ziggler, and it's kind of like. So why is Dolph Ziggler suddenly there? And a lot of people are speculating it's just so that Bobby Roode and Baron Corbin don't have to eat a pin. Yeah. And Ziggler will do it. So that's another weird one. And then you've got this like four way tag team champion match, which is going to be fun, clearly. Yeah. But it's, again, a bunch of people who have kind of been fighting for a while. It's like it's hard because they are a smaller roster with only two hours to work with, obviously, but. It's like it's hard to find the next guy for people to fight. You want to you want to know what? And this is the golden age of SmackDown booking. When they first came back, it shows you the value of Ellsworth. That entire Ellsworth run. Uh, you know the the whole like he's friends with a uh, 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 Dean and and you know they they got probably eight weeks out of building up like. Ellsworth beating AJ with Dean as the special guest referee and all the permutations, and it built right up to him uh, uh, betraying Dean at, at tables, ladders, and chairs, and uh, it was just great. It was it was it was awesome. But that's like to me, that is SmackDown at its or wrestling booking like at its best, where it's like give us the little stories, just the side quests. Your daily, sh- your 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 weekly show are 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 the side quests. With the larger arc being, uh, you know, the uh, of the, the the big pay per views, the big matches. So sure, uh, you know, right now it's like I, I want to see where we go with Sammy and Kevin. Versus... Yeah, that's the most interesting part of the show to me is those yeah. guys right now. And I'm really looking forward to this match, Randy Orton Shinsuke. Uh, it's going to be fun. The weird thing, I don't know if I like the uh, if they lose their fired stipulation because then it kind of makes you go like, well, they're not going to get fired, right? I don't like it. I don't like stips where it makes you think you know what's going to happen, right? So I mean, listen, how many times did Stone Cold get fired, right? How that's many true. Times they could definitely just fired? fire them and then have it be a whole that's a storyline as them trying to get back in WWE. Well, because but. also there is one element of the storytelling that I do love with all this, which is. You know, it seems like Shane McMahon wanted to fire them weeks ago. So what do you say they actually lose this match? What do you say they actually get fired? And what do you say that the, what is it, the, the commissioner or, or well, what is Daniel Bryan, the commissioner or, or the general so, manager? So, uh, yeah, she's the commissioner and, uh, and McMahon is the general manager. Got right? you. Yeah. Uh, Whatever that means. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, Reggie, Reggie 33, uh, bring it, has it. There I you go. I want to see yeah. him get Daniel fired Bryan and, and Daniel Bryan brings Owens him back. And Sammy Zane. Yeah. So, like, 
that seem we're we're going to see a split between Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan, and I think Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens are going to be the reason for it. So then, what does Daniel Bryan do in that scenario? Like, does he wrestle? <laughs> is he? Does he, is, is this like pave the way for them to say, all right, we know you want to get back in the ring. You keep hinting at the fact that you'll leave after your contract is up if you can't wrestle here because well, you want to wrestle so bad. Like, I mean, they let Kurt Angle don a shield outfit and get out, get out there. So is it impossible? No, I don't think so. And, and Brie Bella did an interview to say that they've been to doctors and doctors have cleared them. They just need WWE yeah. to clear them. Uh, I, it, it it seems to me that at some point Daniel Bryan's going to wrestle again. He is. Like, I guarantee it. He's going to wrestle again. Yeah. Uh, it's just a matter of whether WWE lets him do it or not. Like They have to let him do it to keep him in any capacity. Otherwise, he's gone. He's like immediately ROH New Japan guy again. Like If they don't. Well, I'll tell you what. This isn't WWE, but let's uh, uh, let, let let's take a, a brief detour here. Apparently, within the next two weeks, we are going to hear the venue and date of a ten thousand seat mm. independent show booked. Yes, by Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks. This would be a huge moment in independent professional wrestling, considering that venue size. The rumors are. It is either going to be Ontario, California, where they did uh, uh, the uh, Bullet Club invasion outside of L.A., uh, San Francisco at the Cow Palace, London, or Chicago. And Cody Rhodes has said his dream match would be him versus Daniel Bryan. Hmm. Well, you know, if... if So, we don't know the date and all that kind of stuff yet, but it, they did say like that they had... Got some of this stuff is already kind of lined up. Like they're just not announcing everything yet. Yeah. But like some of this stuff has already kind of happened. The other rumor, and it's just it was just posted in our chat, was that Dolph Ziggler would be potentially wanting to leave WWE pretty soon. He would be a pretty big name to add to a ten thousand seat arena card. Oh, they're well. gonna need so, they're gonna need name recognition because that's yeah. a lot of people. Ten thousand exactly. people is that's that's a that's a, a venue that Raw plays and Raw. You know, very often doesn't sell out. You know, they they pack everybody on that on that hard cam side. Now there is the there is the added benefit of it being kind of a spectacle, right? Of it being like, oh, we're gonna go see like the biggest indie promo- like uh, indie event that's ever happened, kind of thing. And certainly so, they would call in every favor from everybody they possibly could. The rumor is they want to co, uh, they want to work with ROH talent. Uh, but I don't I. I Part of me just thinks there's no way that WWE lets Daniel Bryan walk, right? Yeah, it feels like that would be too soon to me. Um, but like I said, like it, it's you know when his contract is done, if he's not wrestling, he's gone. So then it really just comes down to like you know what what other stuff is on in that contract about how soon can he wrestle for other people and all that kind of stuff. Like, the, you know, I don't know the details, but so then the other, so the, I guess to your point about Daniel Bryan, why turn him heel if he can't wrestle? Right. The point yeah, of yeah, having like, a what heel, does he do? Right. What does he do? Uh, if he's against, you know, Shane McMahon, who obviously can wrestle and wants to do crazy stuff every time he does. Right. Uh, you know, do you do you feel okay having Daniel Bryan hold the garbage can in front of his face while Shane coast to coast him? Like, do you feel okay? Yeah. I mean, Daniel Bryan can obviously roll off of a table while Shane jumps off of a really high place. Uh, that you know that doesn't cause concussions. But you want to see him actually do stuff in return. You want to see Daniel Bryan do some kicks. You want to see him like run up the you know the uh, turn bu- turnbuckles and jump and flip over somebody. You want to see him suicide dive to the outside. You want to see, you know, all that stuff. If you get, if you get a Daniel Bryan in the wrestling ring, so yeah. I mean, I think we we can we can do without the flying headbutt. I think we can all agree. Yeah, let's let's and the headbutt spots. Just forget all that. All stuff. the headbutt spots. Let's just be done with those. Yeah. There's plenty the, that he the can do. The drop kick off the top ropes where he lands flat on his back really hard. That we could probably do without too. Yeah. yeah. We just is- want we just want like energetic Daniel Bryan, right? Without. Fear of head injury. 
There is, of course, this idea if if if, if Cody Rhodes uh, and and the Young Bucks bring that show to Chicago. We have left. We want to talk right down to earth in a language that everybody here can easily Wish understand. Wish I would have queued this up. Better. <laughs> I mean, that would yeah. that would set the wrestling world on fire. No, right? absolutely. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, you got to get if you're really gonna do this, you probably got to get some big returning name, and a CM Punk would be perfect. Like that's why I'm thinking about like the Dolph Ziggler if he leaves and stuff like that. Uh, Kenny Omega coming over to do it. So you know, you need some you need some other big names. You can't just sell it on Cody. Like as Cody's great, but yeah. Oh, no, I know. No, no, they, no, they need. Tickets. I mean, look. I mean, look, look. Look at the venues they play now, right? Like, you know, you need WWE grade talent to fill a WWE grade environment. People who know that these people are are out there. You would think that. I mean, I, I don't know if CM Punk has commented on this, but like, you know, if, if he's ever going to wrestle again, yeah. An event that kind of sticks it to the WWE and shows mm-hmm. him to be a huge hero in his in his hometown. Like, why would why would that? Uh, what, what what part of CM Punk do we think wouldn't be into that? It's weird to me that he doesn't just want to be a huge indie star because you know it's like how much money could the man be making right now, just with a few dates a year, really? Like, I I, I know he kind of wants to prove that he can do something new, and I I watched that whole documentary series about him training for his UFC fight and all that kind of stuff. But it's like, dude, I'm sorry. Like, in your mid to late 30s, starting to train to fight against guys who've been doing this since they were teenagers, it's like you're not necessarily that type of athlete, right? Like, No. So let's just, yeah, why don't you just cash in while you're a young man on on the name you've built. And he is friggin' awesome. Uh, I would love to see him show up at a bunch of indie shows and do what Cody's been doing, which is well, but the thing elevating is I, I, the scene and what, making a ton of money. What for I don't, what I I do believe he would not like to do is start calling random indie promoters and and negotiating his uh uh you know eight hundred dollar fee and making sure that he got his travel <laughs> covered, right? But see, like, does he have to do that? Like, does, do you think Cody? I don't know. Do you think it's that hard for Cody that he's? Yeah, I okay, think there's a reason why Cody signed exclusive much. with ROH. I yeah, think sure. that, that there's sure. a reason why he's not playing all these indies anymore, mm-hmm. because he because that's annoying. Like that is know, true. That is true. I think I think there are some people, and let's just say for sake of argument that uh, those people could be nicknamed Joey Ryan, who really like that. That's like a part of what they really love, right? Is is just making, uh, f- having those Tetris bricks fall, so he makes the the maximum amount of money. Right. Uh, well, he he's figured out like the perfect formula too, where he doesn't have to take very many back bumps either along the way. Oh Jesus! You right. Know, come out, entertain the hell out of the crowd. Maybe take one or two, you know, actual bumps, and then uh, dick plex somebody. Have you know an intergender match? Collect your paycheck. Move that's on, it. Do it again. Yeah. yeah it's peace fantastic. out. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. You he know. He cracked the code. It's uh. It's gonna be curious. All right, here, take take your bets then. Where where is this gonna take place? Out of those four cities, I I think L A. the uh, the Ontario uh, California that makes a lot of sense to me because there's a lot of people there. You know, Cow Palace is a you know it's a venue that's a little rundown. I think you want to have it at something that feels a little more updated. You know, well I don't I don't even so. know what where, where were they run in Ontario. I don't. I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, because I, I, I don't know if, if there's a if there's a new ten thousand seat venue that they'd be looking for. <coughs> uh, you know, I would I would guess uh, that that there's uh, you know uh, uh, you know th- th- to me the big question is all right. Do you care about? I mean, like London was one of them. You could run London. It's hot as hell. That the 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 independent wrestling is oh, yeah. alive and well in in, in the there. UK. Huge, they get a ton of great talent for it, but it's in London, right? None of these guys are British. You would think that they would want to do it in America. It's easier to get the talent, and they'd be able to to promote it 
uh, a lot more, right? Unless they want to move to London for a couple months. Uh, I don't know. I mean, selfishly, of course, I wanted to be in San Francisco. Like, sure, maybe. yeah. I mean, that'd be fantastic. I mean, for 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 San Francisco to be the epicenter of independent wrestling. Uh, I mean, I think they should go to Cedar Park, which I just was at for an NXT show. And it was fantastic. <laughs> Plenty of seats there. Great venue. I'll tell you Brand what. Brand new we, stadium, H E B Center. Oh my God! Can so we good. make Can we make the uh, the 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 deal now? If it comes to San Francisco, you're coming home, right? All right, all right, all right. Well, we'll peel it off of the wrestle fund. Look, I I mean, I already have lots of incentive just to come to San Francisco, but you know, throw one more little you know one more little thing onto the pile, and I'm in. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Somebody, uh, 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 Reggie thirty three, bring it. Uh, you were talking about intergender matches. Um, he he mentions, uh, do you ever think we'll see a real intergender match in WWE? I, I remind you, we saw an intergender match with Ellsworth and Becky Lynch. Ellsworth and uh, a couple yeah, weeks ago, yeah. Becky Lynch, yeah. But also, and this is from uh, our, our friends there at Pro Wrestling Sheet. The uh, the 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 now I think close to confirmed rumor is that there will be a new starting in January, a new show. Uh, in uh, uh, basically in the 205 live spot recorded going live on Facebook after uh, after Smackdown is over. And uh, part of that rumor was it might be an intergender an intergender uh, uh, show that it might be men versus women in the sh- in, in the show. Could be interesting. So we'll see. We shall. I see. mean, they, they're bringing in all these. Uh, you know, the the rumor is too is that Ronda Rousey is super close to coming. Um, so you've got some women that you could sell as legitimately tough, right? And also, uh, there's a reason when we when we mention things are in a holding uh, a holding pattern. Like, I think this is the reason why is because we're about yeah. to get a shit ton new stuff that's going to put us on the road to WrestleMania. That's right. Yeah, uh, so moving in. Keep our eyes. All right, uh, we we have a couple more uh, news stories. We don't have to spend a lot of time on them. WWE shares no. are the highest since March 2014. Uh, yeah, this is kind of an interesting thing because I'm not really sure what spurned this on, uh, but it's basically been on a steady incline uh, for about the last. I mean, basically, it, there was a huge dip after this this height. And we haven't quite reached it, but uh, after it dipped down in about like 2015 or so, it's just been kind of rising ever since and hasn't really slowed down. So, well, good news. I, I think part of it is there is just a realization that they got, they spun up the network when they should have, right? That they were, they were ahead of the game and not behind the game by pushing everybody that they could into a nine ninety nine price model, just getting that ten bucks yeah. every single. But now, when, single when did the network actually launch? That was the uh, WrestleMania thirty, <clears throat> and we are at WrestleMania thirty. Okay, so February two thousand fourteen is when they when they launched it. Uh, February of two thousand fourteen, and that is that basically leads up to the excitement around it. Because if you look at it, it goes, yeah, basically skyrockets from the moment it launches. Uh, and then and then March, it kind of reaches its apex right after it's been launched. Yeah. Because everyone's super excited about it. Well, WrestleMania, too. Everybody needs sure. to get it for WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then we get the news. Remember, there are not that many people had signed up, right? Yeah. Now, I, I know you remember this. Like, uh-huh. the, the numbers were disappointing. Yeah. That's what we see. This huge, like it loses sixty six percent of its value over the next like three months to May 16, two thousand fourteen. That's the low point where it's like it was at thirty a share. It's down to eleven a share, right? Now basically, it's just been like this steady increase for the next three years, right? Yeah. And now we're suddenly like almost back to that. So I think really it's just like this is the problem with with something like this WWE Network launch. It's like. Too many people have too much money involved and expect the world in return. And and it's like this, there's so much fluctuation around just speculation, right? And not actual, like, long-term plans. It's like, no, well, oh, well, my God, we're freaking out. Everybody freaks out. Well, remember, Everything changes. Remember, uh, the other thing that happened around that time was 
WWE signed their new deal with USA. Sure. Yeah. And uh, uh, that was not as rich as WWE wanted it to be yeah. because they were expecting to get paid more along the lines of live sports and uh, USA or anybody else was not yeah. willing to pay them that. Was still like, yeah, but it's not real. Uh, but you know, but it also like shows that like unnatural spikes are just not really a good thing. <laughs> like th this last three years has just been like kind of steady growth. And, yeah. and this is, this is just a good, this is good for like all of wrestling. You know, the, the fact that, the main, the big brand is is making money. I mean, I think is making it, money. Yeah, it shows like that the industry is, is healthy. Making money. People want to see it. All right, Willie, let's go ahead and get into one of our most popular segments here. It what separates this show from the knuckle draggers in uh, uh, the rest of our category. Let's talk about the philosophical question. Uh, what, 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 what do you got for us, philosophically speaking? How can we contextualize professional wrestling? So, all right. So, you remember when you were a kid? Yeah, and you'd be playing on the playground, and uh, and you and you really wanted to tackle the big questions, right? And like here on on the one nine hundred wrestling show, we do some some pretty serious philosophical discussions. Yeah, but I kind of wanted to bring it back to the schoolyard a little bit. You know, who would win in a fight, Spider Man or Batman? Like these, you know, these are things like can only be answered by you know the other second grader uh, in in your class. Yeah. So let's let's do that a little bit. So I want to I, I want to sometimes we'll sidebar into schoolyard philosophy That's as fine. it relates sure. to wrestling. So if you could, Justin, if you could Superman punch <laughs> anybody <laughs> in history, who would it be? <laughs> and you can't say Hitler because that's the obvious answer. Obviously, everyone's going to Superman punch Hitler. Now, right? can I all right, in defense of the Hitler pick? It's not necessarily <laughs> just because he is obviously almost universally recognized in our modern culture to be the most odious spectacle of odiousness, right? Sure, sure, sure. But also because he was always speaking. Like, that's when I, I can imagine... Oh, he's cutting promos, and then, yeah, you Superman punch him out of nowhere. <laughs> ah, right? Just right yeah. across his Hitlery jaw. Yeah, yeah. So I would, I would then say I would want somebody else who is always speaking. Like, I would want... Somebody who is like up at a podium, like I want, I want somebody else so Roman can just come running through the audience, take an unnatural jump, like upward, and then just Superman punch him right in the face. So, man, I don't know who else is like a bad person who who you know gave speeches. I mean, I guess it it would, uh, it would I'd have a hard time not saying a dictator. Like if it's not hmm. gonna be Hitler, then I would I would want to go with like a Stalin or someone. Okay, yeah, yeah, Stalin. I think very very punchable. Face. Chairman Mao. Chairman <laughs> Mao's got to eat a Superman punch. Hey, what's Chinese for? Ooh, <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. I kind of like that. Uh, I'm gonna okay, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go like let's see. I'm gonna go one old school. And I'm gonna go one new school. All right. So I'll give you. Um, I'll give you. I'll give you. Okay, my first one. If if I could if I could use a time machine and go back in time, at the moment he's about to assassinate President Lincoln, I would Superman punch John Wilkes Booth. Oh just, my God. Yeah. Just now from that... like there's another balcony above that nobody even knew about. Yeah. I come down from above, then we triple power bomb him down onto the stage. <laughs> uh, yeah. Me, me, Lincoln, and his wife, uh, and Mary Todd. Mary yeah. Todd, yeah. Mary Todd's the dean. Yeah, you, you. I, I assume that you're going to be the, 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 the Seth, even, even though you Superman punch because Abe's got to yeah, be the yeah, one. Sure. Yeah, yeah, because Lincoln deserves to be the, yeah, the Roman, the Roman yeah. Reigns, and that he's the big dog, yeah. clearly. Uh, so yeah, definitely John Wilkes Booth, and then uh, if I'm going to go modern times. I'm gonna Superman punch Steve Bannon because I I feel like probably his face would like explode to a single Superman. He's got punch. a jiggly face. He's got a yeah. very jiggly face. It would sure. it would uh, slow motion would certainly. <laughs> yeah, you could slow mo that. Yeah, like speed it up right at impact and then just blah, 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 blah. like yeah, yeah, there'd be a lot of that going on. He, he'd probably he'd probably need uh, reconstructive surgery after after uh, one Superman punch. So I mean, yeah, now I'm gonna you're... go modern times Steve Bannon. 
now when you get into the idea of, of historical moments that could me- be made better with a Superman punch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like if you could just add a Superman punch to this moment in history. Yeah. Oh, now, now we're talking. Now, you know, I, I feel like... Uh, uh, in fact, I, I feel like... All of, 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 of the, the French Revolution or just the, the, the musical Les Mis could be made better with just Roman Reigns in it. Sure. Just, <laughs> just Superman entering. punching people. Yeah. <laughs> I love that the Superman punch is it's used like three or four times a match. Yeah. But yeah. every single time it's the announcers put it over as if it's like the most exciting thing they've ever seen in their lives. The thing is, uh, it looks great. It's it actually a great-looking great, right? move. Yeah. Like he's like, yeah, th- th- there's a tremendous amount of of, of, of athleticism that goes into, like, because like, you you want to know what he has? He has like that body control, like a uh, 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 Kiari Sane, what makes her elbow drop so good. Yeah, right. Is sure. that there's just this like awesome, very aesthetically pleasing. Like I bet like you both of them in time for a second while she's up in the air. Yeah. You know? I yeah. bet you both of them actually, if you paused their bodies, would fit on the golden ratio. Like it would just be yeah. like there's just something about that that our, our human brains recognize as like yeah. that's pleasing. I like that. Yeah, it's it's like it's like AJ Styles and his forearms, right? It's like you know all that stuff. There's just something about that moment in time when they're when they're hitting it that just looks great. And when they first did it, it was like. First of all, it's a legit move. And like yeah. the UFC people oh, are yeah. Superman punching. That's a other. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And they knock people out with it. But like when it when it first happened, it was like nobody had really been doing that. It was a kind of a fresh take on uh on an old classic, you know? Well, so. because closed fists were like banned from wrestling. That's true. Forever it was just Forever. you know, slaps and uh forearms and stuff. But yeah. 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 yeah no, but you're right. Yeah. The phenomenal forearm I would put in the same category as Kyrie Sane's elbow drop and yeah, yeah it's Something about those moves, man. It was just yeah, the air time and 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 yeah, because like because uh, AJ also he has like that like like he pulls his knee up right like it's just yeah. like yeah, like the whole body's going into it. Uh, uh, all right, hey, I'll tell you what, uh, I am totally unprepared for this episode, and and therefore I do not have a melodica challenge. We will get back. I need to re- reset because I don't know where we are. We've been missing. Weeks and stuff because we've been traveling and and uh, yeah, shit's been, been going down. So going on. I I got called into work on Monday, which was weird because I never that never had. We barely even run shows on Mondays, so it was. I was like, wait, we have a show tonight. And he was like, yeah, and I don't have bartenders, so yeah. So I suddenly had to go in. It's just been kind of a mess. But all right, well here, look at this, Reggie thirty three, bring it. A beautiful, beautiful suggestion. Roman Reigns. Uh, uh, there's uh, all the all the all the rabble rousing in East and West Germany, right? Next thing you know, Roman, ooh, ah, Superman punch the Berlin Wall. The whole thing there comes down. David Hasselhoff yeah. comes out, starts singing. Now that's that's a, a moment in time that would be bettered by a Superman punch. Mr. Reigns, tear down that <laughs> wall, and then he just suddenly comes in. <laughs> you got Hasselhoff in the background singing. Roman Reigns comes in. <laughs> one punch, the whole thing from the center out just starts just getting. How about demolished. this one? Imagine this dingy dark cell, right? All of a sudden, Roman Reigns comes running. Ooh, ah, comes running up, punches the lock right off the cell. Nelson Mandela emerges. And now we have uh, we have freedom in South Africa. Wow! Nelson Mandela comes out. They immediately like start the South African national anthem. Put exactly. like you know yeah. a Bible under his hand and swear him in as president. Right? Power then bombs there. are racist. It's it's great. <laughs> Uh, 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 all right, so we will, uh, we, we, will, we will not have a Melodica Challenge today. However, we will have one next week on Monday when we do the show. I do have a pick, though, something that I very much I highly recommend everybody listen to. Uh, Jimmy Jacobs on uh, the uh, Talk is Jericho podcast. To be uh, very, very fair, I do not think that uh, uh, for all the talents that Chris Jericho has, and he is a man of tremendous talents. Um, is not the best interviewer in the world. I think that even of the ex wrestlers turned interviewers, that some of them are are as good or 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 better. Not to say he's bad; he's just not the best. However, I highly recommend everybody listen to this Jimmy Jacobs interview. Not only do you get the behind the scenes, uh, a story of how somebody who was a lifelong indie wrestler becomes a writer is really the first person to do that. 
Also, uh, all the behind the scenes on the, 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 the best friends and the list of Jericho and that whole KO run. But also, and this is, I think, uh, something that, that really is worth listening to, he goes a lot into, uh, uh, you know, sort of his relationship with drugs and, and the fact that he was on drugs when he decided that he wanted to become a WWE writer. He went to rehab. He's got a, a, a really interesting quote about rehab that, that I'll tell you right now just to bring you into the door. You know, he makes, he makes the, the, the point that, you know, whenever you're dealing with rehab or depression, that the worst thing is that you can't trust the voice in your head. And that that's what's so disorienting and that's what's so hard about it is that you're, you're very often, you know, your instinct is not rooting for you. It's rooting for whatever pattern it's trying to feed. Uh, and, and, that's, and that's hard. It's hard to deal with. And for some, something about that really kind of struck me. And, and, and I think that uh, beyond depression and, and rehab and everything, I think it is something that, like, we can all identify with that 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 you know the 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 less we fail that we feel close to ourselves is when we can't trust our own inner monologue to point us in the right direction. So uh, go ahead and check that out. Talk is Jericho with Jimmy Jacobs. I thought was uh, I thought was exceptional. All right, Willie, uh, where can people find you? Uh, check me out on Twitter. I am at Willie Dills. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Willie Dills is where you can find me streaming. Uh, Hearthstone is getting a new expansion tomorrow. Tomorrow, right? Yeah, tomorrow. So uh, look for that. I'll be pretty much streaming all day, um, and uh, it's gonna be quite fun. Uh, what? Gonna what, enjoy it. what classes look good just based on the on 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 the card reviews? I would say top three classes that I I will assume right now top three classes are going to be uh, Druid, Mage, and Priest. Nice. And what? That's what, how what, it feels. Yeah. What kind of mage archetypes are we looking at? Uh, probably like some sort of a burn style tempo mage, like the, you know, your, your secret mage thing that you uh-huh. really liked Yep, is getting a little bit of uh, support. One new really good secret that burns the face when it, like it kills a minion and then puts the rest of the damage to the face. I don't Woo! know if you saw that one. No, I And then not. also you get the, the legendary mage, uh, weapon, which draws three cards at the end of every turn. And, uh, you know, one of the problems with that secret mage deck was running out of cards, right? So yeah. Yeah, if you could draw through your whole deck, you'd always win with that deck. So. No crap. There you ah! go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wonderful. <What>? Delightful. <laughs> uh, well, then I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, you uh, will probably see me. I'll probably give you a ring a ding ding while you're uh, yeah, while, while you're streaming there. We'll have a good time. You can go ahead and uh, follow, of course, Twitch.tv slash Willie Dills. You can follow me on Twitch, Twitch.tv slash. Justin R. Young uh, stickers or DIAF dot com. Got some rad new pins for that ass. We got that. Please don't die pin. We got a nice little uh, diamond club pin. We got a, a Captain Morgan. Mur-hoy! Go ahead and check it out all over there at stickers or DIAF dot com. And of course, my Twitter, Justin R. Young. But until next time. I want you to call me. This is one nine hundred wrestling. Please feel free to call us back next week. And nobody, but nobody Until then, like me. Remember the number one nine hundred wrestling. Stupid idiots. They call me a hot rock. Hurt your smell. What the rock is cooking? And his name is John Cena. Well, look at this prima donna. Thank God Donald Trump's all heavy yet. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> <laughs>